Have you ever wondered if what you experienced was church hurt or spiritual abuse? Are you curious as to what the difference is between those two terms? Well, in this video, I'm going to go over the difference between church hurt and spiritual abuse. And it's really important to distinguish between both of them because they're confused oftentimes, but they're actually two different and distinct phenomena. My name is Dr. Felucia, and I'm a licensed psychologist and owner of Skillset Counseling, where I focus on the treatment of OCD, spiritual abuse, and cultural abuse. And today's video is going to be within the domain of spiritual abuse. So back to the question at hand, what is the difference between church hurt and spiritual abuse? Um, as a spiritual abuse survivor, you've probably been in a situation where you've explained what you've gone through to somebody and they say, oh, that's just church hurt. Um, spiritual abuse can oftentimes be dismissed as church hurt. But what I found in my experience is that um, situations that people define as church hurt and dismiss as just church hurt are actually spiritually abusive situations. So um, one thing to think about is how, um, when you're trying to distinguish between both, think about um, an individual versus a system, right? So in church hurt, there are individual experiences um, and they can be very painful, but the hurt and the damage is occurring more on an individual level. So at the root of church hurt, what you're going to find is disappointment, disappointment over uh, mismatching or unmet expectations, disappointment about how you've been treated by certain people. And um, church hurt is very painful. But when we look at the effects of church hurt versus spiritual abuse, the effects of spiritual abuse are devastating, right? They are, um, you know, when you compare, it can take a lot longer to recover from spiritual abuse. And another thing to remember is that spiritual abuse is more pervasive than church hurt. You know, I talked about church hurt being um, something that happens more on an individual level. So think about individual disappointment. Spiritual abuse is systemic destruction and devastation. So that's one way that you can tell um, the difference between both of those, okay? Um, some examples. So church hurt can involve things like, um, you know, gossip, uh, feeling betrayed by someone, feeling like, you know, someone shared something that you had asked them to keep in confidence, Um different expectations, you know, a thought you thought at church was going to be one thing, and then you go there and it's something completely different. And so again, those are hurtful things and they occur more on an individual level. When spiritual abuse, um, that happens, like I said, on a more systemic level, and it can affect more than it can affect a lot of people at one time. Um, another thing to remember is, you know, when we think about what is at the root of church hurt, and um, we think about disappointment and then we talk about um, spiritual abuse and we talk about how there's um, destruction there. It's important to understand, you know, why that devastation and that destruction is happening. So spiritual abuse, um, when spiritual abuse occurs, well, actually, let me go back to church hurt. When church hurt occurs, it can occur between members of um, a religious setting or a congregation or anything like that. It could be between members or it could be from a member to um, a leader and vice versa. So members can get hurt by leaders, leaders can get hurt by members, members can hurt one another. That's what spiritual abuse, um, rather church hurt is looking like. So think about church hurt, it can go from leader or leader to member, member to leader or between members. But something that's very important to remember is that with spiritual abuse, there has to be a power differential, okay? So there has to be, and the reason why there has to be a, spirit, um, a power differential is because spiritual abuse is the misuse of spiritual authority and spirituality itself to cause harm, whether it's direct harm or indirect harm. And so for that um, spirituality be, to be weaponized, there has to be that power differential. Now, spiritual um, you know, members of a congregation or members of any kind of setting can be spiritually abusive to one another. But the one thing that distinguishes that from church hurt is that there has to be that power differential. And um, the person who is at the root of the abuse, the person who's really causing it, um, the cog in the wheel, that is somebody who is a leader. Okay. 
So it doesn't have to be a leader, but they have to have some sort of authority over the other people that they are abusing. I'm going to take a minute here to ask you that if you have not subscribed, liked, or shared, would you please take a minute to do so? What that does is it helps get this information and videos like this to other people who would find this content beneficial. So if you haven't done so, please do me a favor, like, subscribe, and share, and comment too. All right, thanks. So back to the question at hand. You know, what are, you know, we're talking about the differences between church hurt and spiritual abuse. Um, and one of the... Um, and another important aspect that will differentiate between church hurt and spiritual abuse is that with church hurt, there doesn't necessarily have to be control, right, at in at um at the crux of it. So when we look over situations where people have been hurt in church or any kind of spiritual setting, um, control does not necessarily have to be present. So it may not be one person trying to control another person. It may be there may be other factors at play, but control doesn't necessarily have to be there. However, with spiritual abuse, control must be there. Um, and when I say control must be there, there is an attempt from the spiritual abuser and the spiritually abusive environment to control. So they're causing harm, but they're also trying um, to control people. And so that's where you can see the differences between spiritual abuse and um, church hurt. Um, emerging, right? So if you think about control, you think about power differential, um, those are some of the things that distinguish spiritual abuse from church hurt. Another thing is that church hurt can usually be alleviated or addressed um, almost completely once the setting or the environment has changed. So let's say there's somebody who's you know just kind of being um, really obnoxious or just hurtful, really difficult to get along with in a particular setting. If that person leaves, then maybe church hurt is happening on a, um, on a, it's just not happening, right? Because the person who was being antagonistic has left, or maybe you are in a situation where you're experiencing church hurt, you leave and you go somewhere else. Well, the church hurt really hasn't followed you. And what I mean by that is you may find it more difficult to trust people initially, but that same setting didn't go with you to wherever you went to next. But with spiritual abuse, it is like a cloud hanging over somebody. And that's because how, um, because a spiritually, a spiritual abuse is desperate for control. And so let's say somebody has experienced spiritual abuse they move on, they go somewhere else, or maybe they just leave the spiritual setting altogether. The effects of spiritual abuse linger and linger. So it's not just happening within that particular setting. It's affecting the person everywhere and their emotions and their body, um, how they look at life, how they interact with people, organizations, how they process their emotions, all these other things can and often are affected or brought about because of the spiritual abuse. And so um, I don't know if you ever heard the saying before, um, wherever you go, there you are. With spiritual abuse, it's wherever you go, the spiritual abuse shows up, right? And part of this has to do with the devastating um, psychological effects of spiritual abuse. But part of it also can be how spiritual abuse um, works. Um, and it works in systems and those systems can kind of be connected to one another. So if you talk to somebody who's a spiritual abuse survivor, if you've experienced spiritual abuse yourself, um, you'll find um, that as you go through the process that you become very isolated. And the reason the isolation occurs is because the spiritual abuse is pretty much everywhere. You know, when people are in that kind of environment, a lot of their friends, uh, maybe even family resources are attached to that spiritually abusive system. And so because of that, because um, be, because that the spiritually, the spiritual abuse is so pervasive because it controls so much of a person's life, it can be harder to escape from, right? It's not just a matter of moving here or going to a different setting, um, those spiritually abusive systems can be connected. And so it's almost like people um, feel like they can escape it physically or escape it um, psychologically. So it can be very devastating. And this is in no way to minimize church hurt. It's just to show that spiritual abuse is much more devastating than church hurt. And the two can even occur together too. Another thing about church hurt is that um, there can they can be discrete and separate incidents, right? So maybe someone does something to somebody else, but it's a separate 
distinct phenomena. Whereas with spiritual abuse, it is subtle. And so a lot of times people don't even really understand or know that they've been spiritually abused until later, even after the abuse ends, because it's subtle and it's widespread and it's pervasive. And so that is also very important to remember that spiritual abuse and church hurt are going to look um, different um, because of how they come about. Um, so that's really important to remember. So again, if you're not sure if you've experienced church, whether what you've experienced is church hurt or spiritual abuse, think about um, the elements of control that are often there with spiritual abuse that may not be there with church hurt. Mm -hmm. Think about the power differential that must be there, right? And so with spiritual abuse, somebody is using their spiritual authority to cause harm and to control. So I hope that helps. Um, I would love to hear from you all in the comment section. What are some ways that you feel um, that spiritual abuse and church hurt differ? For more help along your spiritual abuse recovery journey, um, go to my website, skillsetcounseling.com and click the orange button for a free consultation. Or you can also click on the link in the description box and that will take you to where you can book your free consultation. May you have a wonderful day that's filled with peace. Bye-bye.